My name is Jennifer Burgess and I'm here this morning with my mom, Lynn McKenzie, and we just wanted to talk a little bit about confirmation because, um, you know, when Dash to Fame came on the scene several years ago, it became a game changer for our industry. And so since then, people have started really focusing on the bloodlines of horses and breeding for actual barrel horses where we're breeding bloodlines that we know produce barrel horses over and over and over again. And it used to be that, um, you know, kind of the only people that could afford those bloodlines were the, were the people that had money. But now that we're seeing a trickle down of, we're getting uh, grandsons and granddaughters of Frenchman's Guy, Dash to Fame, Firewater Flit out on the market, um, it's become more affordable and a lot because the, the market has become flooded with a lot of stallions, a lot of mares, and so it's become a very, very flooded market of being able to get um, horses with those kind of name brand names on the papers. And even if they're not own sons and daughters, if we're doing it right, the grain get of those horses should be better than the own sons and daughters are. And so when you get to buying young horses and you're, you're trying to decide what to buy, aside from just buying papers, the thing that we're gonna have to start paying more attention to is the confirmation of these horses and, and what we're breeding for, for, for confirmation because confirmation can ultimately become the deciding factor of the career of the horse that, that you have. And so I, these are the, these are two two-year-olds that I have in training, and this colt is by Frenchman's Chico and out of a Dash to Fame mare. And this other colt, he's also two, and he is by Slick by Design out of a Frenchman's Chico mare. And so uh, I have a pretty decent representation of those particular uh, bloodlines here but I wanted to, to kind of show you some differences in confirmation and how that affects how these colts are started and how I handle them. And so this colt, I call him Bayek, and his registered name is So I'm a Famous Guy, and he came from Amy Barron's, and her website is Shady Oaks. And um, this is uh, information that we learned from a lady named Judy Wardrop. And she has an ebook called Confirmation for the Western Saddle. And her website is JW Equine. And you can download that ebook, and there is a charge for it. But if, if you're a breeder or if you are a person who buys young horses, I highly recommend that book for your program because it will help you understand why certain horses win and why certain horses are successful because there, there's, there gets to be a commonality of things that work and things that don't work. And, and some things, while maybe they're not ideal, you can still work with them if, if all the other things in a horse's confirmation are correct. But for today, the thing that I just kind of wanted to touch on is a little bit of this, of this neck area right here. And if, if you can see in this colt, He's got a little bit of a sharp angle of how his head comes up out of his neck right here. And so, so this part is real easy for him. It's real easy for him to lift, get this lift and this head right here. And what happens when he lifts is it hollows out his back. And so what Judy would say about this horse is that he is an up horse. So his first movement when you ask him is to come up and then move. Well, that's not necessarily the most ideal thing for barrel racing. So when I'm working with this colt, I'm always asking him to bring his head down and kind of reach out for the bridle and, and get that out and that move forward to be his first response. And what happens is if, if I just continue to kind of let him travel around in this up position, then he's building muscle on this part of his neck and this part starts to get thick and heavy and he starts to set up a brace in the bridle on me through this part of his neck. But as I, as I work with him and as I teach him to bring, to bring this head down and into collection, now he's gonna build the top part of himself 
and this whole top from his ears to his tail should start to take on a lot more rounded appearance where it's lifted up because he you ask for lip, lift through the belly and through the sternum and pushes the back up underneath the saddle and that creates lift which increases his ability to reach that inside back leg up under himself in a turn. It also increases his ability when I can move his sternum, when I can be in control of his sternum, that's what increases this colt's ability to reach with his front feet. Because if you take, if you take me, for example, and I were to stand here and stick, stick my sternum out and put my arms forward, this is the amount of reach that I have with my arms. However, if I round my back and pull in at my sternum without, without moving my arms, you can see how much further I can now reach with my arms. So horses are the same way with, these, with, their, with their front end. If you want to increase their ability to reach, you're not necessarily gonna be able to increase that reach when their head is in an elevated position for this colt. He's going to have to get drop drop down into the bridle, get lift to do the sternum and and belly to push that back up to then be able to reach forward. 